Welcome back. So um, the first question I thought we would go over is this question on the posted sample exam. It's a, um, it's a good overview of the relativistic kinematics and some things that actually do relate a bit of uh, relativity paradoxes that, um, you know, if you get confused, that's a good indication that there's something for you to review here. Um, so let's go through this. Um, this long thing of stuff, it's describing essentially this setup. You have a train station, which is at rest, and this defines your, let's say, your um, non-moving frame. This is my frame S. And the train, that's the one that defines my primed uh, reference frame. It's moving at speed of V relative to this at rest thing. And it's going to pass by the station without stopping. Yep. So uh, part A asks for, um, so and I guess all the, all the rest of these are, what it's saying is this. Uh, the coordinate systems are arranged so that um, so if this is the midpoint of the train, then the, the time and position coordinate systems are arranged so that at time equals zero, which would also, um, yeah, at time equals zero, this point would coincide with uh, this point here. So at time equals zero, x prime is equal to x equal to zero. Or um, how do I? Well, uh, let me, without writing this down, let me just put it that this midpoint of the train is coinciding with the midpoint of the train station. Okay? So this is a quick intuition check. Um, so at time equals zero from the perspective of the station, how do you think this train should appear? Should it be? Um, should it be shorter than the train station, or should it be extending out beyond the train station? Shorter, shorter. shorter right? You expect this to be Lorentz contracted, and that is the correct uh, answer. And uh, so let me just draw this. So at time t equals zero, this is what you should see. And um, it says, uh, as described the front end, uh, give the space-time coordinate for the front and back of the train in frame S at time t equals zero. All right, let's try that. So this is the Lorentz transformation for part A. Ct prime is equal to gamma Ct minus beta x. And x prime is equal to gamma x minus beta CT, right? So um, let's plug in the numbers we have. So we have two different uh, points, the front and the back. Let me call the uh, front, um, I don't know, F, and the back, B. So we are looking for the coordinates, X front and X back, right? Um, when you look at this, you, you run into a little bit of a, well, actually, maybe you don't. Let me plug in the numbers and see. So when you plug in the numbers for the front, for example, then this is what you get. All right, so for the, actually, let me ignore the first equation because I'm seeing the first equation is not giving me what I want. I'll just use the second equation. So with the second equation, when I get x prime um, front, so that will be just plus, so let me write down the intermediate step. X, fr x prime front is equal to gamma. Did I say I could leave the answer in terms of gamma and b? No, I didn't. I, I, yeah, gamma and x front, so this is the coordinate I don't know, I'm trying to find out, minus beta c, what's my value of t? Zero. zero. It's at time equals zero, so, oh, so this is just a zero. So I can just solve for, I, this is known, 
the x prime f is plus l over 2. So my x coordinate, x front, is equal to plus l over 2 divided by gamma. So l over 2 gamma. And as you remember, gamma is greater than 1. So this number is smaller than l over 2. So this is xf, which is l over 2 gamma is less than this. It fits within the station. And if you did the back, then it would be the same thing, except for this number would be minus l over 2. So this value would be minus l over 2 gamma. So the same thing again. Good. So all of this is good. So A is supposed to be easy. Fit your intuition. Um, it's a B where you have to be more careful. So B is asking you to describe the situation not from the perspective of the train station, not from the perspective of the train station, but from the perspective of the train. So, so it, um, it's a very important uh, distinction. It says, um, so he looks at, at t prime equals 0 when the middle of the Spain train coincides with the train station. Uh, whether the he really space boys, blah, 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 so that they are at rest relative to the state train station. So this is what we are trying to look at. So let's just say, um, leaving this. So for part B, we are trying to describe this exact uh, same physical situation, but from the reference frame of the train. So from the reference frame of train, this is what you should have. Um, so you have the train that's actually at rest. This is my x prime equals 0, and um, x prime equals l over 2 minus l over 2. And from the perspective of the train, what you would see is that the train station is approaching you um, at some speed of v. So the coordinates are still set the same way. So if uh, this is the midpoint of the train station, then at t prime equals 0, um, this midpoint of the train station is supposed to coincide with the midpoint of the train. So this is the, I mean, that's worded a little bit differently, but this is what the question comes down to. At t prime equals 0, uh, how, where are these front and back of the train station relative to the front and back of the train? Are they beyond this uh, front and back of the train, or are they inside? So does the train, you know, fit inside the train station, or does it overflow the train station? Overflow. So for people who said it overflows, what your, um, how do you get that answer? Yeah, the train station is moving, so you say, all right, moving things are shorter. So you say at t prime equals 0, that this is how it should appear. Um, well, let's see if that's the answer. <laughs> let's uh, have the answer first and then try to make a sense of the answer that we get. And this is a place where if you want to be absolutely sure you didn't make a mistake, you use Lorentz transformation. Not uh, So, I mean, you could technically get the correct answer using length contraction, but that won't help you answer the next two parts. <laughs> so, uh, the, this is what the Lorentz transformation says. It's the same expression we had before. CT prime is equal to gamma CT minus beta x, x prime is equal to gamma x minus beta ct. Now the difference here is, um, so before, we knew what the value of x prime was, right? And we were trying to find the x. But this time, it's different. So for example, if you are dealing with the front here, x front, 
then we know the, what the value of this is. That is L over 2. And this x f prime, that's the unknown. So you look at these two. And let's say um, you were to look at the same equation we used the last time. And you try to do the same thing. All right. So x prime f is equal to gamma x f minus, is this still 0? This is where you have to be careful. It's at t prime equal to 0. In other words, this is equal to 0. You don't have a guarantee that t is equal to 0. This is what, um, so when you use the Lorentz transformation, at some point you should realize that simultaneity is relative. Because t prime is equal to 0 doesn't mean t is equal to 0 at any points other than this midpoint. So this is where you have to be careful. You know, When you look at t, don't say t is equal to 0, because nowhere in the setup said t is equal to 0. It said t prime is equal to 0. So you really should leave this as it is. It's a beta ct, which means, oh, so we cannot solve for xf quite yet. We have, to, um, we have to figure out what this t is, and then plug that in to actually finish it. So that's where we go back to the first equation. This time, unlike here, where we didn't know what this was, we know this is equal to 0. Because the setup said the t prime, we are looking at at t prime equal to 0. So this is equal to 0. So I can solve this for t, I think. So that means this whole thing is equal to 0. So if I solve for t, then t is equal to, move this over, beta x, beta x divided by c. Right? In hindsight, that probably makes a bit of sense. That sort of how much time, maybe it doesn't. You know, I don't know if it should make sense. But that's the value of time. That's the value of t, uh, time for that space-time event coordinate in the frame s. So to calculate this, now you plug this in here. So you get gamma xf minus, plugging this in, I have beta squared. Cs cancel out. So it's a beta squared x. Oh, oh, so value of x would be xf. xf, good. I can factor out xf. Can I simplify this more? What is gamma times 1 minus beta squared? Not 1. No. If that's if it's gamma squared times 1 minus beta squared. Because, yeah, it's gamma is 1 over square root of 1 minus. Yeah, so this is equal to xf divided by gamma. So now, when, so once again, we know xf, L over 2. And we're trying to figure out what x prime f is. And x prime f is um, equal to um, L over 2 gamma. So you get the answer that you intuitively expect. If you are saying that, all right, this is where I'm observing from, and the moving train station is shorter. And the answer you get does say, yeah, it is shorter. This is equal to L over 2 gamma. But when you use Lorentz transformation, what I'm hoping that you would see is exactly how uh, these two pictures are consistent with each other. Because these two pictures are both describing the exact same thing. As in, you know, look at it this way. So you have this physical event. You have this physical event of two cars passing each other. This is the car at rest. You could think of this as your train station. And the other car is passing by it. And as it passes by, the question you are asking is, which of these two cars are shorter than the other? And the somewhat paradoxical answer we, are have, we have is that, well, if you are riding here, you see this car moving past you, this is shorter. But 
if you are riding here, and as you are moving past the here, as you look at the other car, the other car looks shorter than you are. So which is shorter they can. So this is where the paradox comes in, because the intuitive response you would give is they can both be shorter than each other. But really, the thing that our intuition misses out on is the fact that simultaneity is relative. So as this car passes through, you measure its end point at t equals 0, simultaneously uh, in this reference frame. And what that is is different from what the observer on the moving car would say is simultaneous. All of this is a lot easier to illustrate um, on a diagram rather than, I mean, you can write it out in equations, but sometimes you see, sometimes you don't. Um, that's really what the next question on this exam question was. So, so, um, and so I probably cannot ask the exact same question on your exam, because here I'm explicitly asking people to draw space-time diagram to explain this. So let me at least draw the space-time diagram so that um, you can kind of see what I'm trying to illustrate here. So this is the axis for the space-time diagram. The x-axis and the time ct axis. Yeah. And um, I guess I could do tie what I'm, uh, so you know, this is all reminder, but I can tie what I'm going to draw with something that you have seen. Um, <laughs> let me point to the correct one, Lorentz transformation. So Lorentz transformation says that x prime is equal to gamma x minus beta ct, right? So let's consider a line that's defined by set of points which have the coordinate x prime over equal to 0 at different times. So then you have this equation, 0 is equal to this, that relates x and t, or x and ct, rather. So let me write it out this way. Solving it for ct, you get ct is equal to um, x divided by beta. So on this axis, this would be represented by a line of slope 1 over beta. Good. Let me draw that line. So this is the line of the slope. Um, this is the slope of slope 1 over beta. And what do we associate this line with in the space-time diagram? Hmm? You could say this is the word line of the object that said x prime equal to 0. And that also happens to define the ct prime axis. Because ct prime axis is consisting of the point that have value of x prime equal to 0. You know, ct axis is where x is equal to 0. Yeah. All right, so that's one. Let me do another one. So uh, this time I actually want the x prime axis. So this x axis is set of points where ct is equal to 0. So let me do that. So I'm looking at the first equation here. ct prime is equal to gamma ct minus beta x. So if you say, all right, my t prime is equal to 0, then the equation you have is ct minus beta x is equal to 0, or from that you get ct is equal to beta x. <laughs> so I mean, you have just this equation, ct is equal to beta x. Uh, what slope does this line have in your axis of ct and x there? Yeah, beta. So you get the simple line here. So, so if beta is 0, it would be flat. So if beta is something um, not 0, but you know, not quite 1 either, then this line has a slope of beta. And this is my x prime axis. So these are the uh, space-time axis in my space-time diagram. And 
This is the axis I would use to illustrate the events that are going on here. So um, let me start the description this way. Um, so I guess I can start with, uh, let me try to represent the station at time equals zero. So at time equals zero, I have uh, one end of station here at x equals L over two. The other end of the station here at x equals minus L over two. These are the space-time coordinates of the end points of the station, right? At other times, at different times, how do these end points travel? on this space time, what do the trajectory of these endpoints look like? Uh, like vertical, then? vertical, right? As in, it remains at this x coordinate forever. It doesn't go anywhere. So here, if I'm just drawing it, it would look just a vertical. All right, so this is the word line of the front and back of the um, station. I don't think I drew it evenly. Oh, well. <laughs> and let's see. I guess I didn't draw the uh, draw the the unit scale, so it uh, uh, you're just gonna have to me take my word for it when I put these uh, points where I'm gonna put them. Um, so the um, so this is the end point of the train at t prime equal to zero, so that I can mark them along the axis here. So at t prime equals zero, this would be the front of the train. And at t prime equals zero, this would be the back of the train. Yeah. And um, how do these front and back of the, I didn't quite draw this right. Uh, I'll, sorry, um, it, it's a lot easier to, sorry, I didn't quite draw this to scale. Uh, I think it should be somewhere here. That will be easier for me to draw <laughs> correctly. Um, so in, the, in this uh, way of drawing, uh, what does the trajectory of the front and back of the uh, train look like? It's parallel with this axis, right? Because it's moving with the middle of the train. So when you draw this word line, it should have, uh, yeah, I'm not, sorry. Um, I didn't draw this quite right. Um, it's a lot easier when you are graphing this on a computer. So uh, let me just do my best, and we'll just uh, kind of talk through it, what all this means. So this is the front of the train. That's, uh, um, that's, uh, this is the trajectory of the front of the train. And this is the trajectory of the back of the train. Okay. So um, so this is the full explanation of what's happening as the train passes through the train station. So at t equals zero, at time equals zero, the train station guy makes a note of where everything is. He notes you know, where he front and back of his stuff are, but that probably wouldn't really matter because it's not moving anyway. So whether he measures at t equals zero or some later time doesn't make a difference. It's the moving object where he has to be more careful. When he looks at the front and back of the train, it's uh, important that he measures them at t equals zero. So what the train station guy does is he gets the position of the front and the back of the train at exactly t equals zero, t equals zero here. So you can see it a little bit better here. You can see that the back of the train has passed through um, the back of the train station. So a uh, train fits inside the train station. So um, as measured by the train station guy, this is the train. This is all the points that's along the train at the snapshot taken at time equals zero. You know that it's time equals zero because it's along the x-axis where it's all t equals zero. Now, what the train guy, not the station guy, what the train guy observes is that t prime equal to zero 
And that's what makes all the difference. Instead of, so, so instead of measuring the position of the, um, so, you know, at t prime equals zero, okay, so this is where the, uh, uh, where the back and the front of the train is. And um, in his own reference frame, um, so at t prime equals zero, um, the space-time coordinate of the station that he's using for his measurement is this point here. This is the back of the train, sorry, uh, back of the train station at t prime equal to zero. This is the front of the train station at t prime equal to zero. And you see that along this line of simultaneity, which is different from the line of simultaneity used by train station guy, the, the length of the train station fits within the length of the train. So, um, so that's the explanation of it. And I guess uh, um, I don't know how much time you want to spend on that. So I will just leave you here. Uh, I think this is one of the first things I said as we were going into special relativity. Much of the confusion about special relativity, which we call special relativity paradoxes, it stems from implicit assumption about absolute simultaneity. When you get used to the idea that relativity is, is oh, sorry, simultaneity is relative, that what's simultaneous in one reference frame is not simultaneous in another reference frame, then the things that you are used to thinking of as paradox shouldn't be paradox anymore. There's a way to describe it so that it's in a perfectly self-consistent way. You don't have to ask the meaningless question of, well, one of these two must be shorter than the other. Uh, well, th you could also say they must have absolute simultaneity, but they don't. <laughs> so when you're measuring length, that relativity of simultaneity is going to affect how you think about the length of things. Yeah. All right, so that's, uh, I guess, all the time we have for relativistic kinematics.